So yes, as introduced, I'm here today to talk about what we know about heat stress in wheat and how that complements what we know from the previous talk, talking about frost and what we'll hear about later in the, the day from James Hunt relating to time of sowing. All right, very good, We've got some control now. So I've been charged with running a couple of projects over the years based at Roseworthy and primarily that's been a SAGET funded project, it's, that's a, the South Australian Grains Industry Trust which is a, a voluntary um, levy group in South Australia that then independently funds R&D work and I have also last year finished working on a, a smaller GRDC project but the data I'm talking about today is primarily out of the, the SAGET funded project and that is primarily using a controlled environment assay to uh, phenotype in a de detailed way, the heat stress tolerance of current varieties, recent varieties, exotic introductions from overseas, so land races from Icarta and whatnot, and also using map mapping populations to develop uh, genetic tools for selection in breeding programs. So this photo here is the uh, fancy contraption that we use to screen in controlled conditions the, the heat stress of our, our wheat lines. And we, we plant out our, ex our experiments, we then monitor in independently each, each plant and 10 days after anthesis we, we put the plants into the heat chamber for three consecutive days at 36 degrees with 40 kilometer per hour winds for, for eight hours each day. So quite a significant stress and hopefully uh, it's replicating at least in South Australia where we get these cycles of hot north wind days that, that build up to mid 30s even into the 40 degrees and then crash back down to uh, even mid, low to mid 20s the following day. And these plants are also watered to make sure we're not getting too much uh, confounding heat effects and then we compare, we take a whole lot of measurements on the, on the plants and compare them to an unstressed control. So we measure leaf chlorophyll, uh, leaf damage, so senescence and hanging off. We measure spike fertility in a very similar fashion to what was talked about in the, the frost talk previously and also 1,000 grain weight, Let's see what our, our effects are on, on grain size. As we heard in the uh, very kind introduction to this talk, we, we know about heat stress, we know that it is a significant issue and there's been a number of studies over the years that have, have proven this very point. But our, our research in terms of where we're up to and what we know about it is still a fair way behind frost and drought and where we're doing our, our best to catch up as quickly as we can. And I've included a couple of quotes from, from studies that have started to indicate what, what the levels of damage may be. And the bottom one there is 190 kilograms per hectare for every one degree rise in temperature during, during grain filling. So before we get into too much detail, heat stress is a very complex beast. It affects a number of processes within, within the plant and they all ultimately reduce or play into reduced grain yield. So we, during the, the growing season, we have uh, some more visual elements such as leaf senescence and haying off, but this, this damage uh, leads to reduced photosynthetic rate photosynthetic capacity due to reduced photosynthetic area. In the head, depending on when the, the stress occurs, whether it's during flowering or at the, the end of flowering into the, the start of grain filling, we can get di different levels of, of sterility. If heat stress occurs during grain fill, we end up with a, a reduced grain fill duration, reducing grain size, all of these factors compounding to reduce grain yield. And then to complicate things even further, what about, it? Is it, what about the environment, that, that hot environment that is actually causing the damage? Is it heat itself, and there's plenty of evidence to suggest it is? Is humidity or vapor pressure deficit playing into that to either uh, compound the effects or reduce the effects? Mechanical wind, uh, damage from wind directly damaging the plants or changing the microclimate and the, the humidity around the canopy of the crop to again either increase or perhaps alleviate some of the stress 
and also when the stress occurs is very, very important. And what we see as the heat stress damage out in the field is a, a complex interaction of all of these factors which makes my life very difficult and also the prospects going forward of being able to develop some genetic tools and understand it fully is a complex process and going to be time consuming. But we already know that heat stress is an important issue and if you've been listening to climate scientists or Dr Carl yesterday, we're going to be moving into a hotter environment. So I've made this small pictorial here to demonstrate how this could impact on our, our temperature environment. So if we consider this bell curve to the left, our current environment, when we get below a certain temperature, we run into to frost uh, potential damage. When we get above a certain threshold, we are going to run into to heat stress. And if over time our average temperatures increase, this bell curve is going to shift towards the more the higher temperatures, which will well, open up the window for heat stress at a or well, more frequently. And it would seem that perhaps we might get less frost events. Not that I'm trying to put you out of a job, Ben, because if we have a hotter environment, chances are rainfall variation will increase, clearer skies, more uh, frost events. So therefore, this happy window in the middle is going to be less common, which just is a very positive outlook for agriculture going forward. And also to complicate things further, we have at least anecdotal evidence that there's different types of, of heat stress. So in South Australia and over, over here, heat shock is, is the big one. We have at least moderate temperatures and then we have a period, a few days, a day of really high temperatures that come in and just obliterate everything. But more common up north is they have a month or so of stable but hot temperatures of in the, the low to mid, mid 30s. And at least anecdotally, we have evidence that uh, there's genetic differences in response to these two stresses. My research with the heat chamber is largely focused on, on the heat shock, but that's not to, to downgrade the importance of extended heat stress, particularly in the, in the northern region. To put some, to start quantify the effects of, of heat stress, Dion, uh, one of our wheat breeders based at, at Northern, put this data set together at the beginning of the project a few years ago. And it's just a simple linear regression between average site yield at 600 NVTs all across the southern region of Australia and some average clima climatic parameters during flowering and grain fill. And so on the, on the right, we have the effects of the, the cl uh, climatic parameters. And to give an example, we ha have uh, every day over 30 during flowering, on average, within the, the range of average site mean yields within the data set, for every one, every one day over 30 degrees, we had a decline of 380 kilos per hectare and over 800 kilos per hectare for every day over, over 35. So you can see that very quickly we could start to have some very serious, very dramatic yield decreases with not very many uh, heat events. But thankfully during flowering, generally, we say generally because it's not impossible, but at least generally we're going to have less heat events during flowering. But during grain fill, we, we still have very significant effects on yield. There are a lot less than during flowering, but the chances of experiencing heat stress during, during grain fill to some extent is, is very likely. So we've, we've we're using these climatic parameters to not just use, say, every day over 30 as defining a heat stress, but to try and characterise the whole environment to such as average daily temperature, average daily maximum, and how the, the, the interactions between these variables may explain the heat stress environment and how that may explain interactions with yield. Moving on to 
the sort of analysis that we're, we're looking at, at, at now. We've screened a whole lot of varieties through the, the heat chamber to try and understand how varieties may, may vary in a genetic response to heat stress. And so we, we focus our attention on two key yield determining parameters of grain size and grain number. So grain size being 1,000 grain weight and grain number is our fertility index. And we can see that there's variation, varietal variation in response to these two traits. So for example, Yitpi has really good grain number stability, but grain size really declines. And because we target a specific growth stage, it's irrespective of of maturity, it has nothing to do, well, at least up front has nothing to do with the fact that Yippies are a later variety. But things like Ellison and Halberd, and, and also Mace to a slightly lesser degree, but Halberd is very stable for both grain size and grain number and is about the, the most heat stress tolerant thing that we've, we've screened through our heat chamber. So if you want to grow something purely heat tolerant, how birds go, but it's not going to win you any yield contests. So we've found variation. We are not, at least at the moment, we don't have enough data, but we're at, and we're not really looking to develop uh, heat rankings, such as is going on with, with frost at the moment. We don't have enough data. But understanding relationships between the, the trends and the responses we see in the the heat chamber to what we see in our field uh, experiments is, is very important to ensure that what we're measuring is not a complete waste of time and is, is relevant under field conditions. So I'll, I'll glaze over this reasonably quickly, but the point of it is that a significant amount of the variation, 24% uh, of the, sorry, fertility and grain size scores from the heat chamber accounted for 24% of the yield variation across 64 location by year experiments in 08 and 09. So 24% of the yield variation was accounted for by the fertility and grain size. Very, very significant, given that, of course, all of your, your uh, no, mainly rainfall is going to be having a very big impact as well. Something I alluded to before is the effect of, of growth stage and the extent of, of damage. With fertility, it's... The big issue is the effect of heat stress on pollen viability, and this graph demonstrates that really quite nicely in that with the red line we have the, the, the heat stressed response in, in regards to growth stage, and that is compared to the control, and at the earlier growth stages, so during head emergence and into early to mid flowering, the number of grains per spikelet or per head is significantly decreased compared to the control. But conversely to that, with 1,000 grain weight, when we have less grain set due to the, uh, the effects on pollen viability, we get huge grains. But then later on, when we have all the grains set and we have a heat stress event, we really see a reduction in grain field duration and an increase in small grain and screenings. And to put up some pretty pictures, I ran a, a more targeted experiment to see how the growth stages interacted and I was targeting as early as growth stage 45, which is booting, but is when it is associated with pollen formation, roughly. And we can see that when a head was, was stressed at growth stage 45, there's about four or five grains in that head. And at growth stage 57, not a whole lot better. And by early flowering, there's a quite a few more, more grains in there. So if we did have a very serious 36 degree day during growth stage 45, that's the sort of thing you'd expect your, your crops to look like. Thankfully that doesn't happen very often. And this roughly shows what I had two slides ago, so I'll jump over it. So to, to sum up those points, heat stress has a far greater potential for impact at earlier growth stages, but thankfully, the chances of getting an insanely hot day during, during grain filling is, is far less than, than during grain filling where the, the impacts are, are lower in terms of the impact on yield, 
but due to the frequency of exposure, the impact on the, the economics will be far greater. So to understand all of this a little bit more and to also set the scene for the thousands of uh, mapping lines I've been screening through the heat chamber and we'll be screening the field this year, we ran a set of 24 diverse genotypes at, well, in 2013, six locations and seven locations in SA and another three locations in WA last year. And these were selected to have a variation for, for both the 1,000 grain weight response and for fertility response. And this analysis is still ongoing because I'm still getting the, the data in terms of quality in my hands. But in t for a very simple look at it, I ran a, a essentially a site mean regression to understand what the, the impacts of yield or he what heat stress was on yield. And we saw some very significant interactions with, with yield and not too dissimilar to what I showed in the, the earlier, earlier table. And most interestingly, we, for every one degree in average maximum temperature during grain filling, we had a four, nearly 450 kilogram per hectare decline in yield, but that explained 59% of the yield variation across these experiments. So demonstrating that heat is incredibly important and, well, we need to do what we can to understand it further and improve our varieties. This is that same same result. So this is the two years. We have 2013 and 2014. And to, to demonstrate this heat stress, as I was alluding to before, is a very complex beast and it's, it's not necessarily just heat. There's also potentially acclimation going on within the field. And the, the slopes in, in response to average maximum daily temperature during grain filling are very different. On average, through the middle, we ha that explained 59%. But from 2013 to 2014, both significant effects on yield, but, but very different responses. So going forward, that's, these interactions are what we're trying to understand a little bit more. So to sum up, I don't have a magic bullet. I'm not likely to in the near future, or even the more distant future, perhaps. But we do see variation within our varieties. And generally, the varieties that we have coming out of the southern region, so Roseworthy, and even here at Northern, generally they have a pretty decent base level of heat stress tolerance. Nothing's rubbish. But we're trying to understand the, the genetics so we can go forward and hopefully we will be able to produce some incremental improvements for heat stress tolerance. But the key message that both uh, Ben Bidolf and James will, will also make, I'm sure, in his talk, is that optimising the, the timing of the flowering window to minimise your risk for both frost and heat is the, the key point to make sure you're not going to get too, too many severe impacts on grain yield. And that's really the take home message from, from this talk. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to have something a little bit more groundbreaking. And to touch very quickly, Last year, through the controlled environment assay, I put through 4,140 something plants through that uh, heat chamber. It was a ridiculous amount of work and I'm sure my assistant wanted to stab me in the back. But anyway, we got there. And we've, this is primarily eight doubled haploid populations. If you don't understand what that is and you want to, ask me. It's not really perhaps that interesting. But we're using these tools, 1,500 of these mapping lines to We've screened them through the heat chamber. We're going to be screening them in the field this year at a number of locations, trying to understand the, the same responses that we, we were talking about before with the varieties. And hopefully we'll be able to identify some genetic regions associated with improved trait performance so we can use those as selection tools within the breeding program. And that's, that's me. <laughs>